Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about masking. We're going to have a few tutorials about this topic and uh, today we're going to discuss what uh, masking is and why it's important. So here we've got our decoder only architecture which is used by large language models and uh, we've covered all of these topics already and today we're adding this one that we skipped which was masking. We were able to skip it because we were talking about inference and in inference masking doesn't play an obvious role. It's actually got an important role which we'll talk about at the end of the course but it's not an obvious one and uh, we were able to just omit masking for now. But now that we're talking about training and so we've got this little uh, note on the left in orange that we're talking about training. In training masking plays a critical role and it's time to introduce it. So here we've got a sentence that we want to train the transformer on and uh, in inference you would have uh, probably noticed in the past couple of tutorials we were uh, giving the transformer the first uh, six words of the sentence, apples are a type of delicious, and we wanted it to predict the seventh word, fruit. Now, in training, we want the transformer to be able to see all sorts of different sentences, long and short, uh, and understand how the English language works in general. So we want it to see that uh, after these, for example, let's use this example, that we wanted to see that uh, these four words, apples are a type, in this particular sentence are followed by the word of. Apples are a type of delicious fruit. So we want this to be a training sample for our transformer that after these four words, can it predict this next word of? Well, how would we uh, accomplish this? The most intuitive approach would be to take um, these three, these four words, apples are a type, and not even give the transformer the word of, delicious or fruit, just a completely not show these words to the transformer and only use the word of as the target uh, of the prediction of these four words, right? So that's the, the natural inclination, the intuitive way that we would go about this. But transformers are actually much more um, sophisticated, elegant, and powerful than that. We will talk in upcoming tutorials about how training works and we'll develop our understanding of training uh, over time. But for now, what I would like to say is that let's agree on a different approach. And the different approach is going to be, let's give the transformer the whole sentence. So in this case, it's seven words. And let's say we have to give the transformer the whole sentence. And uh, it's, it's going, we're going to understand why this is, is the case in upcoming terms. But for now, let's just agree that that's, that is the case. And create an architecture that would still allow the transformer to train on, on this sample, even though it got a whole, a few extra words on the right. So why is this not uh, a very simple or straightforward um, approach or a straightforward situation? Well, uh, as we discussed, the transformer will take in the whole seven words, right? We're giving it the whole seven words. Uh, in this case, in other cases, it might be a whole 10,000 words. Uh, and we wanted to train on something that's not just the very end, but in the middle. And again, we will f see how this pays off in upcoming tutorials and will be very, very cool. But for now, let's talk about what happens in this situation. Well, we can see that the transformer will have this uh, multi-head attention. And in the multi-head attention, the context-aware vector representations that we're going to be creating for these words, apples are a type, which we're using for our prediction of the word of, they're actually going to be able to look not just at each other, but they're going to be able to look ahead. They'll be able to look at the word of, at the word delicious, at the word fruit. So they'll see all of this coming, uh, that's coming ahead. And that's a big problem because that means they, the transformer will simply be able to uh, shortcut or cheat its way into predicting this word of because it already knows that the word is of is coming up. So it's not going to learn anything useful. It's just going to say, oh, I know the word of is coming up because of my context-aware vector representations, which used the word of in, uh, in their creation. And so I know exactly what word is coming next. So we have to somehow hide these words so that the transformer can't cheat. And how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use masking. That's where masking comes in. Uh, even though this whole sentence is going to be put into transformer, uh, in this tr specific training, when we're training a transformer to on these four words, and that this one is the fifth, the fifth word that comes after them in this particular sentence, we're going to hide these with masking, and masking is going to be in this multi-head attention part.
Hello and welcome back. Today we're talking about masking and this is part two. We're going to find out how masking works. So in the previous tutorial we talked about uh, what masking is and what critical role it plays in training. Uh, we agreed that for now we're going to uh, always give the transformer lots of words even when we wanted to just train on four words and predict this fifth word. We're going to give it the full sentence whether it's seven words or 10,000 words in a segment. Uh, we want to create this architecture and we'll find out why this is important in some upcoming tutorials. For now, let's talk about how this is accomplished. How is this um, architecture accomplished in uh, using masking in the multi-head attention? So we talked about multi-head attention previously. And here's a slide. Please refresh this in your mind. If, um, uh, if you do need to revisit it, please do in uh, the previous uh, tutorials. It will be very helpful in uh, the explanation that's coming up. And as you can see, in this case, we didn't talk about masking. It was uh, something that we omitted, whereas now we're going to uh, talk about multi-headed tension again, but this time with masking. Uh, again, we've got the, this first part, uh, which is the indexing part, and then we've got the part where we do the weighted sum. Okay, and uh, <laughs> given that we've talked about this, this tutorial should be uh, quite a breeze. So we're going to focus on masking. Um, what are we going to look at? Well, as before, we've got the query key indexing where we've got uh, the all of our vectors, which is which are in a 512 dimensional space. These are K vectors for each one of the words. Notice that we even have the words uh, like the future, quote unquote, future words, uh, which the transformer shouldn't see. So we're using the words apples are a type and we want to predict the word of and the words delicious and fruit and the word of shouldn't be visible transform, but still in the key, query key indexing. Uh, so it comes this uh, this comes over here. We're still at the multi matrix multiply sp step. Uh, it comes before uh, the masking. So they're all available here. So these are the K vectors for each one of the words and then we've got the q vector for the word type which is um this this happens for every single word so what we're talking about now is going to be um, done for every single word but we're going to use the word type just as an example in our illustration so then we're going to look at the dot products for example the, the dot product these two vectors are going to be uh, quite high simply because they're more or less aligned by the looks of it. Again, it's very hard to visualize a 512 dimensional space, but you know, for argument's sake, uh, these ones look uh, like quite aligned. As we remember, dot product uh, is the uh, multiplication of the absolute values of two vectors times the cosine of the um, angle between those two vectors. And in a 512 dimensional space, most vectors are probably going to be um, orthogonal or uh, perpendicular to each other and therefore their cosine is going to be zero so this dot product is going to be zero or close to zero. Um, so here are the dot products as we discussed previously normally what we would do with them in a simple um, attention mechanism without masking we'd just put them through a softmax uh, so that these values these dot product values we would put them through a softmax function to get a probability distribution but in this case, we want to use masking. And how does masking work on a mathematical level? Well, we're going to add a mask. I'm going to add a mask to these dot products, and the mask is going to be zero, so no mask, no masking uh, for the vectors that should be visible. So the first four words should be visible. Apples are a type, should all be visible uh, in this prediction of the next fifth word. And the other words that shouldn't be invisible, they'll get a mask of negative infinity. So when you add that, you will get the dot products of the first four words are going to be unchanged. The dot products of the um, fifth, sixth, and seventh word, they're going to become negative infinity. And when you put them through a softmax, now that you've got these negative infinities, uh, you're going to get a probability distribution. So now we're moving on to step two, this matrix multiply, right? So we've got the dot product. The scaling, again, we're not going to focus on that too much. It just helps with stabilization of the uh, training. Um, masking is what we've just discussed. Then we're going to do the softmax, which we also have just done. And then we're going to move on to the weighted sum over here. But here is uh, here are our, here's our probability distribution. As you can see, these vectors were masked. Uh, and these are the dot products, well, after the... Uh, softmax 
that we get. Um, here, they could be zero. I just put them close to zero so that we can distinguish them uh, from the masked ones. So these ones are close to zero because, you know, maybe these vectors are not aligned, these dot products, and their softmax is therefore also close to zero. Um, and But these ones at the bottom, they're masked. Because uh, when you put uh, take uh, exponent of negative infinity, that's when you get a zero on the top over there. And we're going to multiply that by the v values of the vectors as we did in normal attention. Uh, and what we'll get is these um, vectors multiplied by the you know the probabilities or the uh, the, the components, right? So it's not necessarily like a probability distribution. It's more of a like we want it to add up to one, right? So when we apply the softmax. Uh, it adds up to one. In some cases, it's a probability distribution to find out, you know, what's the most likely thing. But in this case, we're uh, um, applying softmax and we're getting these values that add up to one just because we want to do a weighted sum at the end and we want, it, uh, we want the, va the weights to add up to one. So that's where we're doing this weighted sum. We get the weighted sum of the vectors. These ones are masked, so they get zero. And in the end, uh, we are getting a context-aware vector representation uh, for this word type. Again, this is done for every single word in the sentence, uh, even the ones that are masked. The, this will be done for them later on. But for the word type specifically, um, because it's the fourth word, that means these ones are masked. If we were doing this for the word apples, then all of these would be masked. If we, this, we were doing this for the word delicious, then only the last word would be masked. So whichever word you're doing this for, the, the following words are masked, which is quite intuitive. So in, in the case of the word type, uh, it's context vec uh, where vector representation is going to, this resulting vector A is going to have the words type itself, obviously, um, the word apples, R and A, and a combination of them based on these weights. So there we go. That's um, how we get to this uh, masked uh, or this uh, resulting context aware vector representation in a masked fashion. And uh, this way, it's all exactly how we want it because this context aware vector representation is not able to look at the future words. So when the prediction will be happening for the next word, which is the word of, uh, it's not going to have any information about these uh, future words. Hello and welcome back. We're continuing our tutorials on masking and today we're going to talk about the triangular mask. All right, so this is what we discussed in the previous tutorial about how masking works and in short, we add negative infinity when we want to, um, we add negative infinity to the dot product when we want to hide certain words from uh, the um, transformer so it can't look ahead in its prediction. And let's have a look at how this works for different um, lengths of sentence. So as we discussed, we want to predict um, something. We give the transformer the whole sentence we have and we wanted, in the previous example, we wanted to, to use these four words to predict this one. But we could actually do that with all different sorts of lengths, right? So we could do that with one word. Uh, let's say we we only give it the word apples and we want to predict our, uh, the word R. Well, predict is a very strong word in this sense. What we wanted to know, we want, we want the transformer to learn. We wanted to learn in training that in this particular sentence, which is a valid sentence in the English language, the word apples was followed by the word are, right? There might be other sentences where the word apples is followed by other words, but we wanted to learn from all sorts of sentences. So how is it going to learn from this sentence? Well, we need to apply masking and we need to mask all of the future words. As we discussed, we're going to give the transformer all seven words. In this case, it might be 10,000 words in another case, but we're going to give the transformer all seven words. And uh, we wanted only to see apples and create a context of a vector representation from the word apples of itself, and then predict the next word, right? So that's, we would apply masking like that in this case. If we wanted to see only two words, then we would apply masking like this. We would give it apple, we'll give it the whole sentence. It would see apples are, uh, we'll see, it would see everything, but then in masking in that dot product part where we apply, add neg negative infinity, uh, we would add negative infinity for the dot products of these, uh, with these words, and this would become invisible, right? So then for three words, we would mask like that. If we wanted to predict from four words, as we discussed, we would mask like that. That's exactly the example we had previously. For f if we wanted to predict from five words, we would mask like that. If we wanted to predict from six words, we would mask like that. And finally, if we wanted to predict from all seven words, uh, what does it need to predict? It needs to predict the end of sequence token. So here, uh, basically, we would not mask anything because it needs to see the whole uh, sequence.
So that's uh, the masking of how it would be applied in different kind of samples. These are all training samples. So this is a training sample. This is a training sample. All of these are different training samples for the transformer, we, which we're creating from the same sentence that we have. And as you can see, this looks like a triangle. So if we write this out in terms of what we add to the uh, dot products, in the first case, we would add uh, zero and then negative infinity to all of the other words and then double, then zero zero and then negative infinity and so on. So if we rewrite this as the negative infinity par uh, parts, you'll see a clear triangle. And that's why it's called um, the triangular mask uh, because it looks like a triangle when you write out as a matrix. And the other thing I wanted to say is that it, it's also call, called, sometimes called the causal masks, not not casual mask. <laughs> no, those words are spelled similarly. Uh, the causal mask, because um, it masks things, it, it helps with causal predictions, right? So uh, you cannot look ahead, right? In a, in a causal model, like for example, BERT, it's not a causal model, right? It, it can look all sorts of ways. And we're not going to talk about that now, we'll talk about later on. But in uh, GPT, and uh, in uh, large language models, they're causal, right? Like they want, they have to predict the next word logically that comes and it's a cause of the previous words. And that's why it's also called a causal mask or a triangular mask. Now make sure to check out these videos on the right or the full course in the description to continue your learning. And I look forward to seeing you there.